Got it. Okay. Got it. Okay. So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Gerard Sneese. This is my wife, Hiroko, who's from Japan. And we'd like to thank Lee Gundell and the Mass People Library for inviting us to share um, the, the Zen art of Kado, which is Ikebana, flower arranging. Okay. My wife and I are uh, the community outreach directors for the Japan Center at Stony Brook University. Uh, in that capacity, uh, we produced a Sakura Matsuri Cherry Blossom Festival uh, over there, and usually the first Sunday in May. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to do it the last two years, um, but it's a full day of Japanese culture and activities for the whole family. So hopefully next year, everyone can join us there. We also, uh, three years ago, built a Zen rock garden at the Charles B. Wang Center in one of their uh, atriums overlooking two classrooms. And uh, this, this Zen rock garden um, symbolizes uh, the connection between uh, the Asian countries. Um, so it's, very, it's a very nice men, um, meditative place for the students to sit, do their homework, or just, or just relax. So today we're going to uh, be showing, demonstrating for you Ikebana. And I'm gonna give you a little background on this. And then my wife is going to do a series of different arrangements so that you can see the different styles. <clears throat> First of all, uh, Kado, the way of the flowers. So the, the, the Chinese character Do is very important. Uh, it means the path, the way. So you have Judo, and you have Kendo, you have Bushido, the martial arts. Uh, every path is is a every art that has that um, as part of their name means that this art is a Zen art of trying to become enlightened through the development of yourself in the art. Ikebana literally means living flowers. So at some libraries that we go to, uh, one of the questions was, "Can I use silk flowers?" And the, the answer would be, "Well, you would be doing a Japanese style arrangement, but it wouldn't be ikebana." So you need to have the living flowers, okay? It started out as the flowers that the people would put on the altars in the Buddhist temples. Uh, so it's not a flower arrangement where it's the, a centerpiece, like in uh, the Western dining rooms, you'd have a, a, a bouquet of flowers set up in, uh, in the middle of the table. This was designed to be set up in, in an alcove. Now, um, we have an alcove right behind my wife, uh, where in my studio here, this is a martial arts studio, uh, she, she presents the Nikibana um, every day for our students to appreciate the changing of the seasons. So Nikibana for the Japanese is all about connecting with nature and each season has its own particular aspect of it, which you wanna bring out in your flower arrangements. Um, the, it's, the oldest school comes from about 1500. So Nikibana, in the way that it's been developed is, uh, is over 500 years. My wife's school started in 1807. The founder, Ipo Misho Sai, all right? He was uh, 1761, 1824 is his uh, years of, of, of uh, in Osaka. Okay, he was in Osaka. Now, the tools that we use, these are, this is a traditional um, scissor that my wife brought from Japan, uh, garden shears. Here's another one. Uh, these are just very strong steel, uh, iron scissors. And then we have the Kenzan, which is the pin, the pin frog it's called in English. Kenzan means, literally means mountain, uh, sword mountain. So it's like a bed of nails. This is what enables you to uh, arrange the flowers and put them on different angles so that you can um, create your, your arrangement. So you can see in the back behind my wife that we have this alcove uh, with these two trees that are from our property, a pine tree and a birch tree. Then we have a hanging scroll and then we have a little flower arrangement in there. Now that's very typical for Japanese homes. Uh, they have these beautiful 
beautiful alcoves in their homes where they do all different sorts of flower arrangements. Uh, you can see this top one here has uh, bamboo twisted around into an arrangement. And these are different alcoves and homes in Japan. You can see the little uh, platform um, that is used for the, the flowers themselves with the scrolls. So we wanted to show this kind of culture to our students here in, uh, in America and so that they get a feel of being uh, part of the Japanese culture as they study the different arts that we, that we offer here. Uh, we're in Farmingville, but I grew up in Mass Pico Park. So uh, Mass Pico Library is my old home library. So I'm really excited to uh, do this uh, presentation to you today. Um, the actual arrangements of, flower, uh, of Ikebana is done in two, and classical way is in a triangle, a scalene triangle. It can either be vertical or horizontal, but there's three elements usually in the classical Ikebana. The heaven element is the highest one. The man element or the human element is the middle one. And then the earth element grounds everything. So uh, the earth element is grounding it. The human element is in between heaven and earth and striving up to heaven. So you have this kind of um, philosophy in the arrangement itself so that uh, when the people were making these arrangements, originally it was for the, the um, Zen, Zen temples where they tried to, um, to come down to the essence of, of reality through the arrangement of the flowers and the display of the flowers on their altars. So less is more in flower arrangement in Ikebana. Um, what you wanna do is you wanna see a few elements put together so that you can, can um, feel whatever the day brings or whatever the season is. Okay, my wife uh, changes the arrangement back there uh, every few days whenever the flowers are wilting, um, she'll make a different arrangement. And usually it's from flowers on, in our, on our property. Um, also, there's a front and the back to um, Ikebana because it is a, supposed to be against the alcove. Um, on a shelf, you have a front and the back and each plant and each flower has a front and the back. So that my wife right now, you're looking at the back of this arrangement. Okay, so she has this um, Lazy Susan here that we use so that she can spin it around once, once she's done arranging it. And again, these pin frogs are very heavy. And so you can put in, you can see, you can see all the pins on that. Okay. And these come from Japan, the ones that my wife uses. Um, Michael's has little ones, you really can't do much with them. Uh, you need a lot of them to put into a vase. And classically, traditionally, the vases were horizontal, but nowadays we have vertical vases, um, all different kinds of vases and containers. This allows us to rearrange the um, actual uh, pie pieces of flowers and shrubs that we're using to get the desired angles so that you can get that triangulation. Uh, another question that was asked of us is, can you use wet foam? And we say, well, you can use it, but once you put the flower or branch in the wet foam and you try to arrange it, you're gonna open it up and, it, and um, that it's not gonna stay in its original spot. That's why the, the uh, pin frog or the Kenzan is uh, what we wanna use for actual the uh, Japanese Ikebana flower arranging. Okay, so here's the first arrangement. Um, there's no, rules about what colors go with what colors, uh, but we wanna get a feeling of nature, okay? This is a golden cypress that we have on our property. My wife was out at 5.30 this morning, going around the property, cutting different shrubs and different flowers that this season is, you know, the best season for Ikebana because every day you're gonna have a different flower uh, fl uh, flowering. And in Ikebana, you can have a, a bud, 
or you can have a flower that blooms and then wilts really quickly and that wilt is okay. It's part of the cycle of nature. And that's all part of Vicky Bonner's appreciating cycle of nature, life and death. So this has the high heaven triangulation with the three branches. And then you have, okay, three branches on a flower. And then the lower flower would be the chrysanthemum. That's, that would be the earth element. And then this flower would be these are spray. So you can use either a spray or a one stem. These are the carnations. It has a little bit of spray. Okay. So what we did was another spray. So you can use the spray, or you know, you're not limited to your choice of what you want to use. Um, but you do want to do go out in your property and look around and cut interesting shrubs that have interesting leaves or branch arrangement along with flowers. Now we went out and bought some flowers for the demonstration today, but typically my wife just goes out to the, to the, uh, flower property and looks to see what's blooming and cuts it. That's what we have in the back in the alcove is, is a, uh, one of our plants. This. Okay, so this one, Rose of Sharon, okay. So in the tea ceremony, which is another Zen art called Chado, another art that ends with Do, you usually get something very, very plain, rustic looking. This is a very uh, rustic kind of vase, very small. And it has a loop in the back here if you want to hang it on the wall or we can put it on a little tray. Okay, so in, in Chado, in the Zen, uh, the, um, Zen tea ceremony, you don't wanna have very ostentatious flower display. You just wanna have one little petal here so we have one that's blooming and then we have one up here that maybe is past its bloom and that gives you the idea of uh, the, the cycle of life, which is what you want to uh, contemplate and, and appreciate during the tea ceremony. This alcove here, this pine tree comes from our property and the birch tree comes from our property. Again, in the alcove, we wanna have something very rustic but as close to nature as you can. So there's nothing that's uh, really been um, scoreboard. This, this shelf that this is on is another piece of tree that's got its bark on the front of it. Okay, here's another traditional vase, horizontal vase. Okay, and there's two big tenzons in it. All right, big uh, rectangular ones like this because it's a big wide space. And my wife is gonna do more of a, a modern style because she's shaping, she's actually stapling these bamboo leaves into a folded shape. This is a natural, this is actually bamboo. This is a, a different kind of bamboo. Usually you, you're used to the thick stalks and the small leaves. This is just the opposite, very small stalk with the leaves. Okay, this is called the beer, bear, the kumo sasa, kumo sasa, all right, which means bear. Uh, I have no idea why they named it that, but um, the leaves are big and the stalk is, is small. Uh, and my wife is creating a modern way of, of doing it. So there's different, there's the traditional classical way, there's the, um, Nagi ire, which means the thrown in method, which we're going to demonstrate a little, little bit later. Uh, and then there's the, the um, chado uh, ikibana, which is chabana, which means the flowers of the tea ceremony. And that's the austere one that we have in the alcove back there right now. The bottom one, and there is ikibana uh, branches, uh, organizations throughout the world. So a lot of Japanese arts have 
spread throughout the world because of the Zen um, type of attitude that are, that's in the art. In a typical Ikebana class in Japan, you would, you would come in and the teacher would do an a, a arrangement and then the students would go get their materials, sit, sit and actually meditate on the arrangement. And the class would be done basically in silence. The teacher does the arrangement, the students look at it, contemplate what, how they want to um, copy the arrangement. And then the teacher would go around and, and fix something, maybe take an element out or cut it or trim an, another element or bend one of the elements to a different angle. Um, and then the student would possibly at the end of the class ask, you know, what, you know, why did you do this or that to my arrangement? And the teacher would explain to them uh, the different aesthetic principles that they were looking for. Now, the aesthetic principles are that you want to have it uh, be a reminder of some state of nature and have a feeling of what happens in nature, whether it's the wind blowing through the, the branches, okay, or the um, different elements that combine together where you might have something nice and, and flowing like this, the tiger grass, with something nice and solid like the uh, flower that, that Hiroko is using. Um, again, you wanna have it not to be too overbearing. It's, it's not a bouquet. Um, flower arranging in Japan is, is the art of it is to get to the essence of what you're presenting. Okay, and normally you would do only one a day. Uh, my wife Hiroko is going to be doing um, a, a bunch of them right now for you so that you get a different idea and then you guys can go out and try and do it your own. Now you can use wet foam if you like. Uh, you can go to Michael's and buy uh, the, the uh, the round ones that aren't that big, but if you got three or four of them and you had a small vase, then you could, um, you can start doing your own flower arrangements. You can use horizontal vase, or you can use a vertical vase that we have in the back. Um, and we'll show you that kind of style also. And then we'll show you how to make your own uh, containers out of materials that you might not think of would be um, used for, for uh, a flower arranging. Again, this is the back of the arrangement. And they do have um, shows. They, they, they do have flower shows like we have here in America where they have uh, judged um, Ikebana competitions where you go in and you make one or two arrangements and then the whole room is full of these arrangements and the judges go around uh, and they'll select the grand prize, the blue ribbon, um, the best in show and, and different things of that nature. Uh, I believe in New York City, they have a few, um, one or two a year. I, knew, I know the New York Botanical Gardens up in the Bronx has a Santamum presentation every autumn and it's a big event. I don't think they've had it for a number, uh, couple of years now, but uh, it's a very big event. Chrysanthemum is very um, popular in Japanese culture. It's actually the, the crest of the emperor of Japan because of the so many petals on the chrysanthemum, they call it a thousand petal flower. And it's to represent a thousand years of, of, of longevity and health for the emperor and his family. So the chrysanthemum, which is called Kiku, um, they have big festivals in Japan where they arrange um, the chrysanthemums into different, um, almost uh, like the Rose Bowl parade or out in California where they have the big uh, floats made out of flowers. Uh, in, the, in the chrysanthemum uh, festivals, they do the same thing where um, they'll, they'll actually make kimono and have people, Japanese legendary um, um, heroes and heroines, with kimono that are made out of flowers. So it's very beautiful to see that kind of uh, festival. Okay. Now, there's a lot of elements in this one. This is more for a, um, this would be more for a festive occasion, uh, not, not your, your typical 
every day Ikebana arrangement. This would be if there was a event going on or maybe a competition or, or, or an exhibition. This would be more of an exhibition style Ikebana, uh, a little bit more modern. Okay, so there's more elements in it. Here's the, the bamboo that my wife has stapled into pearls, all right, which gives it a, um, a different kind of effect that you wouldn't see in nature, but also makes it look like a bow, right? That it's wrapped up in a bow. Then you have your, your lower elements, uh, sunflowers. Okay, and then the type. So the contrast of the broad flat, uh, leaves here with the tiger grass up here, okay, it, it gives it a nice contrast. These bamboo we have on our property, the tiger grass we have on our property. This is a kana lily, kana lily that we have on our property also. And then this pink um, bush, it's actually a bush, um, comes from um, the neighborhood here. Okay, so. Um, this is more of a um, exhibition piece of Ikebana. You can see that you, you're getting a little bit more elaborate. Yes, yes, Margaret asked if, if I ever go to libraries. Yes, we can do workshops. Um, if, if the libraries are now accepting people, we've done it in a lot of libraries in the past where we, we go to the library and we bring um, all of the flowers and, and, and elements that you need. And we have um, these plastic vases that look um, like ceramic and you get to take the vase home and you get to take your, uh, your own flower arrangement home. So we can do that. Um, the autumn is a great time to do that or in the spring. Um, so maybe I can, you guys can all ask Lee if, if you'd like us to go to the library and, and do the workshop. We have a Nikki Bonner workshop, okay? Okay, I'm going to move this to the back table. Now, Hiroko is going to make something a little bit more modern. That would be great. Okay. So, I'm going to move this to the back. And you can use flower food to keep the flowers um, alive longer. And, but also in the Nikki Bonner arrangement, you can take out elements that might be past their prime and add another element. If you have uh, greenery, like in this first one here, right? Maybe the carnations aren't going to last as long as the uh, as the chrysanthemum. So. Um, and the carnations are, are dead. You can take that out and, and add another couple of flowers. Of course, the greenery will stay. The carnations will stay a long time, and maybe the the carna uh, the chrysanthemum will stay a long time. So you can keep an arrangement for uh, you know a week if you want to swap uh, some elements of that arrangement. Okay, so here's a modern vase, a glass vase, and the uh, kana, the red flower that we, we uh, Hiroko used earlier, this is the leaf. This is the leaf of the kana. Uh, it's a green with a red tinge to it. It's a very uh, unique kana lily. Uh, they grow, you know, they're annuals or they're, they're bulbs. So you, you store them over the winter. They'll come back each year. This glass vase is more of a modern one. So um, even though it's over 500 years old, the art, it's still evolving. Every artist that has uh, a Nikki Bonner license, and you do get license or certificates, almost like um, you know, in the martial arts and karate and, and the other martial arts where you get black belts, well, you get a kind of a certificate that you're a black belt Nikki Bana, meaning that you're 
you're certified to be a teacher or a demonstrator or a teacher's teacher uh, for Ikebana. And Hiroko has a teacher's, teacher's license and certificate. So when we go do workshops, it's actually uh, you know, certified by the Japanese um, school that she's uh, been trained in. Okay. Again, the front and the back. Was summertime only like this, uh, and uh, maybe he blew flower in one day. Not the summertime. This is very yeah, unique. Water. Very unique. Again, this would be for more of an exhibition, uh, or if you're really avant garde in your flower uh, and your artistic uh, uh, bent, you know, if you if you really like to do things really avant garde. Uh, this is a glass vase and the flowers are submerged actually in the water. And then the kind of leaves are framing the, I call it the American hibiscus. All right. And, th and these, these flowers pretty much are well, one day. And then they're they sort of, you know, wilt there for one day. There is a part one day it bloom, then come the next bloom. Okay, so when um, when you use this, this is a very Zen flower because it's, it's the lifespan is one day. So you have to really appreciate the here and now when you when you make a flower arrangement like this. One day, one day, one day. Uh, so now you have these blooms on here. So you can use something like this because it shows you the promise of 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 the blooms that are about to be. So. You wanna have each cycle of life and the seasons uh, portrayed in a Nikki Bonner if you're only going to do one, let's say at your house, you can add an element of, all right, we're not, it's not booming yet, right? It's almost there, okay? Then another part of the arrangement, you can be something in full bloom and then you can leave that in the full bloom um, even if, when it's past its prime a little bit. Here, here. Okay, now the water, what's in the water here? Uh, water, hydrangea. Hydrangea, she hydrangea. has hydrangea in here. From garden. From our garden. And Black Eyed Susans yeah. and more hydrangea. So this makes this a very unique kind of flower arrangement um, where, where she has that actually smurged in the water. Okay, so let's when, move. Uh, you do, uh, brush, uh, if you have if you have uh, glass vases, um, you can put you can put the glass beads on the bottom of the vase, all right, so that you know the little little glass decorations, um, so that you want to. Not hide the pin frog, uh, Kenzan, but you want to make it so that it looks a little bit more uh, that the pin frog isn't just sitting there with the flowers on it. You want to have something around it that um, gives it a little bit more um, uh, depth. Okay, so. Okay, so it's talking about different uh, containers to use for Ikebana. Now, Japanese, when they go visiting, they bring a gift of food, usually a little snack or something that they share with their host. Uh, and this, this container here is paper, almost like uh, origami. It folds up and there was a tin of cookies and crackers in here. Okay, my, and my wife, after we, we received this, she really liked the element of the gold just peeking out of the white, okay? But it's cardboard. So how are we going to make this into a container for Ikebana, right? So this is the gold inside. So use an old mustard jar, I believe this is, right? So it's just a ceramic um, um, jar and she puts it in there. And then when she makes her arrangement, 
all you see is the actual paper. So if she was to bring this to an exhibition, the judges would give her points for her creativity of, of displaying an Ikebana in something that doesn't look like it should be holding water, a cardboard um, box. So. Okay, so this is a modern style. Do you have a pin frog in there? Yeah, so she has a small little pin frog in there, uh, but it's a small container, so you don't wanna overdo it. You don't wanna put a, a big bouquet of flowers in a small um, container in this kind of style. Black White Susans. You can though make it look similar to a, a Western style bouquet because of the, um, the tightness of the actual container itself. You're not gonna have a lot of space, but that's okay because the actual container itself is very spacious. May, may be hard to pick up on the camera, but it has a feeling of, of opening up itself as if it was a flower have this feeling that this can open up. Oh, that's the butterfly bush from our property. So monarch butterflies and uh, other butterflies really like, you know, to, to come in and get the nectar from that, from that flower. And that's right outside of our bedroom window so we can see butterflies. Floating around, flitting around in our bedroom. Okay. Butterfly bush, Gavella. Gavella? Gavella, which I don't know. That. It looks like a, almost like a chrysanthemum. Um, got many petals. Black Eyed Susan from our property and then a butterfly bush. So it almost looks like a little bouquet, but you do have your front and your back. Okay, you see the flower the back of the flower, all right? And so again, your Ikebana, you wanna have a front and the back to it. If you do make a, a, a centerpiece Ikebana, um, the big one that we have in the back that she made, that would work as a centerpiece only because there, there is a lot of elements and there's a lot of interest going on in the entire piece. Uh, the smaller Ikebana definitely is gonna have a front and the back to it. This one definitely has a front and a back to it. Um, but if you use it as a centerpiece, this is what someone on the other side of the table is going to see. So it may not be that desirable. This is the back, right? And what is important, though, is that Hiroko cut a couple of branches off of here to get the one branch that she wanted, right, and the angle that she wanted. Okay, the same thing with here. You can't be afraid to, to cut and snip, especially when you're using tree branches and shrubs. We use maple leaves, cypress, um, all different trees you can use in the Ikebana. So it's not just about flowers. Okay. This element here. You have that cardboard cutout, okay? And then you have this. So again, this is the back. You wouldn't be seeing too much of that. This one back here, you might be able to use that as a centerpiece because even in the back here, you have some interest going on. It's almost as if you're looking if you were walking through a garden and you were walking, let's say, on the north side of the, of the garden bed, with the flowers always facing south towards the sun. So it does have some interest on the back here. So if you're making a bigger arrangement like this one, um, you could do that on, on your 
let's say dining room table. If not, if you have like a bookshelf or end tables, um, Ikebana works on, on that kind of uh, furniture where you have a bookshelf and you can put it right on the bookshelf or on an end table. Okay, this next vase that Philip was using is actually a log that's been hollowed out. This was a gift from one of my um, instructors in here who teaches who's teaching uh, kendo. And this has brass, copper, I think it's copper. And you can see the, it's been beaten. Um, this design has actually been hammered into the wood. This is just a wood log. And there's a copper bowl in here that's been hauled out about one third of the way down. And there's a trellis with um, wisteria hanging on it. Um, that's been, okay, you can see the uh, artwork that's uh, copper that's been um, hammered into the wood itself. And we've had this appraised um, at one of the library, you know, what they do here, like antique row shoulder appraisals. The guy said he'd never seen something like it. He doesn't know what this would be worth, but he says you better insure it for like $500. Okay, all right. Okay, so this leaves. Do what? You I don't know. It's some. Judah, uh, oh, Judas. Judas tree. Uh, Judas tree. Okay. It has another name, but uh, Judas tree uh, has interesting. Spring, uh, yeah, it's got it's got tiny purple flowers in the spring, right around the same time as the cherry blossom. Uh, then the, the leaves get really big and broad. So again, you have the back of a leaf. And then you shape, have the front of the heart. Shape is a heart, shape of a heart. Okay. Well, I don't know why they named it the Judas, because maybe he broke pieces of his heart. I don't know. Okay. I know Judas. Okay, so even though Traditionally, the vases were horizontal. This is a more of a traditional, you know, vertical one because of its rustic nature being the, the log that it is. Um, you, you would use that also at, in, the, in the alcove. This could be used for uh, the Chado tea ceremony, um, but you would only probably have one maybe two flowers in it. So it'd really be, probably one of them would be cascading. Since it's vertical, you wanna have a cascading feeling of some sort of tree that, is a pin frog always used? No, we're gonna show you the thrown in method in a minute. Uh, this has enough space to put a pin frog in it. So it, the pin frog also helps in the stability of the arrangement. So. Again, if you were to use uh, the wet foam, once you put the, the um, flower or stem into the wet foam, you better be sure that that's the angle that you want. Because if you start moving it around, it'll open up and then it'll just pop, up, pop over. So uh, Ikebana in Japan, <clears throat> they, created, they created this little bed of nails that they use. And you can go on uh, the internet and, and purchase these. Um, if you're really, if you're really getting into Ikebana, um, this is a good size one. It's hard, it's, for, it's a rectangular and it's heavy. It's a, it's a heavy piece of uh, uh, metal. Okay, with the you can see all of different how many different pins are in there, so that you can really put stems in that very easily, and then turn um, angle them in any way that you want. But we'll show you the thrown in method. Uh, you can buy them on Amazon. Thank you, Helen. All right? You can go on Amazon and you look up Pin Frog or Kenzon, and uh, here you go. Okay, so this one, because of the arrangement, uh, I mean, the, the, the uh, 
caught on top of this, which is a wisteria trellis, a trellis with the cascading wisteria, you want to have something that gives you that kind of effect also in the arrangement. So Pinocchio has the cascading leaves, the front. So she very gently, she was bending the stems very gently so that they would actually go to the desired um, angle that she wanted. Okay, then we have a lot of buds in here that promise uh, the promise of the, <laughs> the lilies. And the Inca. Lily of the Inca. Lily of the Inca, which you can get a lot now in, in different bouquets when you go to the supermarkets. They have the flowers now, Sam's Club, Rice Club, yes, wherever you go. Different colors. Very, uh, very popular now in bouquets from because Peru. they from Peru. And they're very popular now because they come in different, a lot of different colors um, and sprays and they like that. Keep it on time. Yeah, and they and they actually are very uh, keep a long time. Okay, so you have that. You have your different colors. There is no color rules in Ikebana, so you you use your own sense of color um, for your arrangements. Okay, you use whatever whatever kind of containers you have. Uh, vertical or horizontal, you can do something on a vertical container. You want to have something that maybe is a cascading and feels like um, it's part of nature that 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 kind of tree or branch or or um, shrub is a naturally cascading shrub. Okay. I don't know if that's in the or Now this phase was a gift from our friends. I think Peter and Margaret and Jim and Christine uh, gifted us this phase uh, one year. Uh, and so this is um, more of a American contemporary vase, but Hiroko uses it to demonstrate the naga ire, which means the thrown, thrown in method. So there's no pin frog here, okay? But in order to get the ang um, angles that you want, Hiroko cuts the stems on an angle and she puts them in and she hits the side of the vase at, at any particular height. It's going to hit the side on the inside, which will allow it to uh, form an angle. So it depends on what kind of shrubbery you're using and um, what effect you want to get. And then, then you, can, you can make an arrangement. Okay, so she's using the tiger grass again <clears throat> as the beginning of the arrangement. Again, um, all of these elements, they have a high, middle, and low, even though it's abstract. Hiroko's ideas, when she's doing it, contain that, that aesthetic principle of the high and the middle and the lower uh, elements. So this would be typically a, 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 a flower vase that you would put a bouquet in for a centerpiece. But as a Nikibana, you see that there's a back here. And so that, again, you wouldn't really want to use this kind of display in the center of a table. You would want to have it more. Um, if you have a dining room set that has the, um, the back table, the sete or whatever it's called, uh, then you would put it back there and not as uh, the formal arrangement on the dining room table. So typically when we're doing this at libraries, we allow everybody, yeah, there's water in the vase. What is, how far is the water? All the way up to there, all right? So there's water in the vase, all right? Um, and typically when we go to libraries and we do workshops, and or demonstration. Sometimes we just do a demonstration. Sometimes we do a demonstration and workshop. 
everybody gets to keep the flowers and take them home, all the flowers. Now that we're doing it here in my studio, we're gonna be decorating the whole studio um, with all of these arrangements. Okay, so here's a modern, what's called naga ire, which means thrown in method, where you're just putting the, the flowers in at different levels of the vase. And you have your hydrangea here. What's the, what's the spell? White. Ah, hydrangea. So they're uh, both hydrangea. They're, garden. These are uh, Okay, so the, the little pale green ones we got this morning from our flower shop and the, the purple blue one here we got uh, from our property along with the uh, tiger grass. So this is a thrown in method. Okay, no pin frog is needed. And it's almost like it's a bouquet, but it's not a bouquet, right? Because you would normally see tiger grass in a Western flower arrangement, unless it was very modern. Um, and also because this does this has a front and the back. Okay. Okay, here's another container that is surprising because it's birch branches that have been tied up. So again, something that very creative uh, in inside, the sense that. Uh, what? Inside, inside is a jar, a glass jar. All right, it's made of sauce jar. But so what gives this the, the um, appeal is that what you can see is, is the branches tied up. Okay, and then now you have a, an arrangement inside of that. So this is something that you would use at an exhibition to uh, give the, that little wow factor to the judges about um, the creativity of, of the uh, using the different kind of materials for a uh, container. When you're doing, when you are, using roses, always cut a rose underwater so that the water goes right up the stem uh, and not air. That'll let, make the rose last longer. You don't, you don't wanna call, cut a rose um, and let the air get up the stem, okay? I don't know if you have to do that for all the flowers, but definitely for roses, you have to do that. So again, um, it, could, it can be the, the um, <clears throat> vertical ones can look like bouquets, um, but they will have a front and a back. So here's a, a this is rose, red rose, and the, the, the green is a purple What is it? Europe, the ordinary is in Europe, the purple uh, Puplorum. Puplorum. Puplorum is originally from uh, Europe, this kind of uh, um, plant. Okay. Uh, this is for uh, not the main uh, to rose, uh, which is more. Uh, it's to give the rose a little green. like uh, collar, right? Very nice greenery here. It's very yeah. subtle. Got a little subtle, almost yellow flowers inside of the green leaves. Um, and very, very interesting, the actual shape of the, of the, of the leaves have a very distinct shape. Not the outstanding rose make you- The rose is, the rose is the centerpiece, but if you can see the actual leaves of the plublor, plublor, uh, Boo, boo plurum, all right? If you can see the, the leaves, they're very, just, um, very unique and interesting. So the rose is something that obviously everybody knows and appreciates and loves, okay? But then you have this interesting backdrop to the rose. So although we're normally used to rose in bouquets, now this would be a, very classical um, arrangement, like say an exhibition, because of the white 
birch, contrasting with the deep red rose and the subtle, interesting uh, bucloram um, backdrop, background. And you have this a little bit higher and lower at the same time. And I gotta be careful moving this so that the jaw doesn't drop out of the bottom. Uh, uh, no. There's another wicker basket with a, a glass jar in it. Okay, so it's always interesting to use material that wouldn't be thought of as something that you could be uh, using for flowers. So this doesn't look like it wouldn't hold water, obviously, but put a jar in there and then you have a, a nice, interesting container for the, um, for the flowers. So use your imagination, go around your house, see what, what looks good. Um, an interesting that you can pair with uh, flowers and shrubs. And now this is, a, this is a maple tree that we have at our house. So it's definitely um, conducive, Ikebana, to using not just flowers. You want to use other elements of, of um, plants that you wouldn't normally associate with uh, uh, bouquets. All right. So Trees, shrubs that have interesting foliage, um, the maple that in the, in, the, in the autumn, if we use the maple that's turning bright red or the burning bush that turns bright red, those are things that you wanna use uh, in autumn, Ikebana. Every season has its uh, peculiarities and you wanna bring that out in your, in, because Ikebana in Japan is all about the, the, the artist communing with nature and the season. So Hiroko goes out early morning to pick the flowers before we come here to the dojo for uh, her daily Ikebana arrangement for the students. Um, and you wanna connect with that season. It helps you connect with the season more when you, when you look, walk around looking at different aspects of the garden, not just looking to see if you need to pull weeds out or anything like that, or just admiring the flowers that you planted uh, but also the trees that you planted, the shrubs that you planted, looking at them. I'm sure you all have, uh, you know, beautiful gardens that you've actually planted things in that you enjoy. And you can bring that enjoyment into the house in the Kibana, not just uh, use, utilizing flowers. And don't be afraid to cut. Uh, like they say, this is a nice maple leaf, beautiful Japanese uh, green maple. Uh, with, with hints of red. Um, and as they say in the art of bonsai, you want to have your arrangement um, open enough and not cluttered so that the birds or the butterflies could, could fly through the branches. That, that's one of the principles of bonsai and also Kibana, you want to have it feeling natural and not cluttered. Um, we have enough clutter in our life. We want to really get to the essence of each um, element that we use in Ikebana. We wanna to get to that essence of that element as we um, create the, the Ikebana arrangement. And we always have so much more left over. <laughs> and that's why at the libraries, it's always good because everything we have left over Everybody just gets to take home with them. That have that's thrown in also. Okay. Uh -huh. no, no pin frog. So this is not. A, there's no pin frog in this one either. So this is nageiri, which means thrown in method, which is a modern method. As Hiroko is looking at the arrangement, especially with trees, 
you always want to trim the branches so that you get a nice um, the effect that you want on the branches. You don't want to have them too cluttered. You want to be able to see the essence of that of that branch. Oh, okay, Roanne. I'm glad that you uh, enjoyed the class. Thank you. We're almost done. A couple more minutes, we'll be done. Okay, so from all of that over there, we come up with this right here. All those leaves, all those branches that Hiroko brought with her, and she came down to two, two branches, right? Two branches, um, the heaven branch rising up, and the earth branch. So it doesn't have to be different element to be the heaven or earth. Thank you, Margaret. All right. Um, so we have this element down here and the other one up here, cascading. Again, it's a little bit of cascading effect. All right. Over here, as if the wind is blowing the, the maple tree, gentle breezes, all right? Blowing the maple tree. And then we have the Dog. Stock. Dodges. All right, so you have your purple spray here, and you have your stock here. So this gives it a little bit different effect with the uh, maple tree. You can see how that from here to the middle element, and then this over here. Okay. Um, okay. So that that'll be all for today. I hope you enjoyed enjoyed it. If you have questions now, we'll be open to, to questions. No problem here. Okay. Uh, if anyone has any questions, you can unmute yourselves. Oh, thank you, Helen. Glad you enjoyed it. All right. Great oh, job. job. Great job. Look forward to a workshop. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we'll we'll uh you have to speak to Lee and you're you're the guys that are gonna make it happen. So if you guys all say, Yeah, we would like you to come and give us a workshop so that we can actually do it, Ricky Bonner and take it home with us, we'll be more than happy to do that. We've been doing it for for uh, many years in different libraries across the island. So more than happy to go. Uh come to the Mass Pequot Library. Oh, yeah, well, you know, we're, we're just so happy that you were able to do the presentation for us and, and we're going to be very happy to share it on YouTube. Um, you know, many people will share it. And many people will see it. And, um, and we're happy that you could do the talk today. And thank thanks you. again. All right. Well, thank you all very much. For thank spending you part. very much. All right. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Many thanks. Bye. Bye. Okay. All right, Lee. Okay, I'm I'm hitting end now, so. Okay. Oh. Okay. Have a good day.